This video lectures will look at plants adaptations to terrestrial living. How did plants make the change from living in a mainly aquatic environment, such as the ocean here, to living on land, which has a lot of challenges associated with it? Well, adapting to just terrestrial living, in general, plants are complex multicellular organisms that are autotrophs. They're photosynthetic. Overall now, they're primary terrestrial, dominant organisms on the surface of Earth, and nearly 300,000 species of plants are known today. And this just gives you an example of some of the diversity within uh, plants. So adapting to this terrestrial living, green algae that were probably the ancestors of today's plants are aquatic organisms that are not well adapted to living on land. Before their descendants could live on land, they had to overcome many environmental challenges. So just making this jump even uh, to the rocks here. You see green algae pictured right here. Questions are, how did, they, how did these plants learn to absorb minerals? How do they conserve water being on land? And how do they reproduce on land? These are some of the major challenges plants have to face. So again, comparing that algae to that plant, the whole algae performs photosynthesis, surrounding water supports it, and it can hold fast, in this case, in the water. Well, terrestrial-based plants have leaves, cuticles, stomata, stems, and roots to help support them. And we're going to go over these in detail. So to start adapting to the rest of the environment, plant macronutrients. So those are the big nutrients that plants are mostly composed of. They constitute only 1% or more of plants' biomass, which is their dry weight. These are things you might be familiar with seeing on fertilizers such as nitrogen, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and sulfur. Uh, and these may not be in exact elemental form, but they're what plants need so that you don't get this yellowing region here. This is a potassium deficiency. You want to make sure your soil is fertile and has the proper amount of nutrients to support the plant growth. Now pH influences nutrient availability. So we see here a pH of 7, which is neutral. Most of the nutrients overall in land are most widely available. As we decrease or become more acidic, we see in particular nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, sulfur, calcium, all start to really get less plant available. Same thing if the soil becomes too alkaline, uh, it can also reduce the availability of certain nutrients. You see iron here being the exception at a lower pH, it's more plant available. So what is pH? Just a reminder, it's the measure of the hydrogen ions. And we see here pH of 0 being extremely acidic, pH of 7 being neutral, and pH 14 being very basic. And we see where some common um, solutions you might be familiar with. Great. So coffee, slightly acidic. Blood is just ever so slightly basic. Uh, milk and magnesia, ammonia, bleach, a lot more on the base. A lot of your household cleaners are basic. And this again here also gives you just that general scale of what it is. And pH, remember, mathematically is equal to the minus the log base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. So a way to think about this is a very acidic environment has a lot of hydrogen ions. As we work our way to becoming more basic, we notice the hydrogen ion amount decreases and the hydroxide ion increases. And see it's a proportion because it forms this nice rectangle. At pH 7 or neutral, the hydrogen ion concentration would equal the hydroxide ion concentration. And pure water, which is what neutral would be, is H2O. So you see one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide becomes H2O. HOH is reduced to H2O. And just these little brackets mean concentration. So different crops have different target ranges. I want you to think there's one golden pH to reach. Grasses are 6.2 to 7. Blueberries are much more acidic, 4.5 to 5. Tomatoes, like you can grow in your garden, 6.0 to 7. So there's different pH ranges for different crops. What all crops have here um, is roots. And these roots are responsible for absorbing minerals along with water. The first plants involve the symbiotic association with fungi called mycorrhizae. This is a beneficial fungi that helps absorb nutrients. So the plant is able to more efficiently absorb nutrients, while the plant gives the mycorrhizae the fungi um, sugars that it makes from the leaves. This is why it's a symbiotic relationship. Both species are benefiting. So adapting terrestrial living, one key uh, living on land is avoiding or preventing from being dry, drying out. Plants have watertight, waxy outer covering called a cuticle. This is what it looks like here. It allows water to beat up, highly waxy, lipid-based. Water enters the plants only through the roots, and the cuticle prevents water loss to the air. So water is coming in the roots, through the stems here, 
and going up to the leaves. Going through, this is an example of a leaf, which we're going to learn more about in another video. But this cuticle is this protective layer, limiting the amount of exposure water can evaporate out. One area that water can leave is called the stomata, specialized pores that allow passage of water through the cuticle. Remember, these are pores, not say holes in the leaves, because the plant can regulate them, as we see here. They're found in leaves and sometimes green portions of the stem. They allow for the passage of carbon dioxide into the plant for the photosynthetic process, and water vapor and oxygen can pass out of them. And again, the plant can regulate whether it's open or closed. When it's open, water can leave, but allows um, necessary components like carbon dioxide into the, the, the leaf. However, there's only so much the plant can keep these open before it dries out and could die. So mine is a give and take process, you know, letting water out and CO2 in. However, the plant can only let so much water out before it wilts and may die. And you see here's the example of the stomata in a cross-section microscopic view of the leaf. You see that very thick cuticle here on top and also in the bottom, only allowing water loss through the stomata. One of the other challenges that plants face going to the terrestrial environment is reproduction. As plants could not move, it was necessary for plants to pass gametes from one individual to another. Early plants needed a film of water for sperm to swim to the egg and fertilize it. Later, pollen was developed, allowing the transfer of gametes without drying out. So very early plants, as we see in mosses, very low to the ground, need that film of water. Uh, now plants have developed ways to use potentially air. They can use, also use pollinators to help that. So these are some of the ways plants developed um, and dealt with some of the challenges going from the aquatic environment where the algae or common ancestor may have originated to the dry environment of land.